Hello guys, how are you doing? Today we are going to talk about a completely new set, Interchange Intro. So Interchange Intro is designed for starter levels. Okay, uh, now we are going to talk about first lesson and... All right, let's start. It's nice to meet you. First, uh, we start with a conversation. My name is Jennifer Miller. Okay, listen and repeat. Unit one, it's nice to meet you. Page two, exercise one, conversation. My name is Jennifer Miller. Part A, listen and practice. Hello, my name is Michael Oda. Hi, my name is Jennifer Miller. It's nice to meet you, Jennifer. Nice to meet you, too. I'm sorry, what's your last name again? It's Miller. Okay, fantastic. You know, this is very nice conversation that you have to pay attention to. Why? Because, of course, it is very basic and simple, but you can use it specifically when you're talking to somebody that you do not know him or her and this is completely your first time right so michael and jennifer are, are having a conversation right now hello my name is michael ota basically uh of course you are basically shaking hands and you're introducing yourself this is a very nice sentence to introduce yourself hello my name is mesa okay uh, and Jennifer says, hi, my name is Jennifer Miller. But of course, it is a sort of response or answer. And uh, Michael continues and says, it's nice to meet you, Jennifer. So this is super, super cliche. It's nice to meet you, right? So when you're talking about it, okay, uh, it is super, super easy to say it's nice to meet you or it is a pleasure to meet you or I am more than happy to meet you, right? And Jennifer replies and says, nice to meet you too. So reply means answer. Michael says, I'm sorry, what's your last name again? So here we have two points. When you're sorry, okay, you can also say, excuse me or pardon me. Sometimes I beg your pardon, right? So, uh, but of course you can always say, I am sorry because this is super, super polite and uh, a very nice expression to mention. What's your last name again? Or you could say, uh, what was your last name again? You know, if, if it is your first time that you're talking to somebody, it is good to say, what is your last name again? Because sometimes you forget it or the last names that you receive or you hear are very difficult to remember, specifically when you are basically in a uh, universal atmosphere, right? Or global atmosphere. So what's your last name again? Uh, it's Miller. Why it's? Because you're talking about the name itself. Or she could say, my name is Miller. But it is super, super short and very official, right? Let's go forward. Uh, now we are talking about first name and last name. You know, first name is a sort of name that everybody calls you by. And of course we have last name, right? So synonyms for last names are, you know, surname or family name. So if, if somebody says, what's your family name? What's your surname? That is exactly the same as last name. No problem, right? Now let's go forward and talk about this snapshot. What is a snapshot? A snapshot is very short, very brief uh, picture that contains some short sentences or information inside it. And you have very quick look at that specific picture, let's say. Understand? Let's listen and let's see what is going on here. Page two, exercise two, snapshot. Popular names in the U.S. for both males and females. Listen and practice. Taylor. Jordan. Casey. Jamie. Riley. Jesse. 
Hayden, Peyton, Quinn, Rory. Fantastic. So, you know, these are some of the popular names in the United States of America. Okay. And uh, it is good to be able to pronounce these names by listening again and again, because if you are going to make some American friends, it is good to be able to pronounce these names properly, right? And uh, by just listening and practicing, you can do it because practice makes perfect, right? So uh, basically, it says circle the names, you know. Of course, maybe you, you have heard them before. Or it says, what are some popular names for males in your country? For females also. Of course, you can uh, type in the comment section below and tell me about your countries, your cities, favorite or famous, or let's say popular names, right? What names are popular for both males and females? Yeah, specifically in your country or your place. All right, you can just basically type in the comments section below and I will definitely try to answer them. Now, grammar focus. Don't worry, we are not going to kill you. You know, grammar very fast, okay? Grammar is basically a set of rules that we need to pay attention to. That is it. Don't worry about it. By practicing, by repetition, 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 you can fully and naturally understand and get, obtain the grammar. So, my, your, his, her, right? So, if we talk about the word my, it means something is mine, okay? Something belongs to me. For example, I would say my telephone, my laptop, my camera, right? My, it belongs to me, right? Your, it belongs to you. For example, I say, what is your name? What is your name? Your, not my, your name, right? Or his and her. So we use his for males. We use her for females, right? So we can say what is his name? What is her name? And you can basically answer this question. So what's your name? My name is Taylor. What is his name? His name is Michael. And what's her name? Her name is Jennifer. So a very short and quick tip here the phrase what is which is a little bit longer uh, is super super official and formal okay if you want to speak formally and officially i would suggest you to make longer sentences no abbreviation no shortening all of the sentence should be long so what is your name this is official but if you shorten it like basically say what's your name that is normally informal language or friendly language understand okay here we have uh, a, co a conversation uh, you can basically fill it up because if I try to fill all of these conversations and grammar and everything this video would be like two hours so you can pause the video right now and try to answer the questions and if there's a problem if, if you have a question you can ask me on whatsapp telegram or facebook groups right we are there and we try to be helpful go down let's talk about the spelling names listen up page three exercise three grammar folk page three exercise four spelling names part a listen and practice a B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. 
Fantastic. So listen, alphabet is very important. Still, I have some students who are basically C1 level. They have problem in spelling their names. Okay. At least if you do not want to memorize alphabet, at least try to be able to spell your names. Come on, please. Right. So spelling your names what is the spell? The spell means to code. For example, you say, what's your name? I say Maysam. So can you spell that? I would say M-E-Y-S-A-M. -E so this M-E-Y blah 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 is spelling. Understand? And pay attention to the vowels because majority of the uh, students who have problems in remembering or basically memorizing the alphabet comes from the vowels. Why? Because uh, basically uh, English language maybe collides with your language, which is maybe uh, similar to English alphabet, right? In that case, basically the vowels like A, E, I, O, U, okay, are very, very important. Try to simply learn or memorize them. Fantastic. Let's go forward and let's see what is going on here. Listen up. Page 3, Exercise 4, Part B. Class Activity. Listen and practice. Then practice with your own names. Make a list of your classmates' names. What's your name? My name is Sarah Connor. Is that S? A-R-A-H? Yes, that's right. How do you spell your last name? C-O-N-N-O-R? No, it's C-O-N-N-E-R. Fantastic. So this is a sort of class activity. Obviously, we don't have any class right now, but you can create a class with your friends, with your classmates, with your best friends who are trying to learn English, right? Uh, very from, I mean, start from very, very beginning and try to improve yourself. And once you get once you learn these small and basic conversations, I would say you would have no problem in the future understanding and applying longer, much more difficult conversations. So what's your name? So how can you practice? Uh, you know, you can stand in front of the camera. You can stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself. What's your name? My name is Maysam. Is that M-E-Y-S-A-M? Yeah, that's right. And it says, how do you spell your name? Uh, you know, C-O-N-N-O-R. In this case, you need to basically imagine another name and try to spell it. And then you can say, no, it is C-O-N-N-E-R. Understand? Uh, it is super, super easy to talk to somebody, specifically a foreigner, okay? There are lots of, lots of groups, even in, in our WhatsApp, telegram groups there are foreigners you can practice this conversation and try to say okay can you spell your name what's your name can you spell your name and they can also ask you the same question right practice 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 that's it let's go forward listen up page three exercise five listening first names how do you spell the names? Listen and check the correct answers. 1. Your name is Kara Nelson? That's right. And how do you spell your first name? It's K-A-R-A. -A. Okay, thank you. So number one was this one. Okay, number two. 2. Mark Brown. Your first name is spelled M-A-R-K? No. My name is spelled M-A-R-C. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Yes. It's M-A-R-C. Oh, so it's Mark with a C. Got it. Fantastic. Number two goes to this one, right? Three. My name is Sean Jones. 
Thank you, Sean. That's S-E-A-N? No, it's spelled S-H-A-W-N. Oh, excuse me. S-H-A-W-N. That's right. Fantastic. Number three goes to this one, right? And number four? Four. Your name, please? It's Sophia Jenkins. Is your first name S-O-P-H-I-A? No, it's S-O-F-I-A. Oh, so it's S-O-F-I-A. Thank you, Ms. Jenkins. And number four goes to this one, right? Very good. All right, guys, let's go forward and let's see what we have got here. Okay, listen up. Page four, exercise six, word power, titles. Part A, listen and practice. Miss Ito, single females. Mrs. Morgan, married females. Ms. Chen, single or married females. Mr. Garcia, single or married males. This part is very important. You know what? When we are talking about the titles, always and always, we need to put the titles at the beginning of the sentence, right? So, for example, we have Miss for single woman. We have Mrs for married woman but when we do not know whether this woman is single or married we say ms all right but for men single or married young or old no problem you are saying mr but again don't forget that when you are using mr miss mrs uh, you have to put them at the beginning of the sentence uh, and then put the name afterwards, all right? So, and one more thing, when you're using these titles, you definitely need to use the family name or last name. You cannot say, for example, Mr. Maysam. You have to use my family name. Or here, there are lots of, lots of family names, and then you're basically trying to use them, right? Very good. All right, let's listen to the second part and let's see what is going on here. And let's listen and just try to write. Or exercise six, word power, titles. Part A, listen. Page four, exercise six, part B. Listen and write the titles. His name is Mr. Lopez. Mm -hmm. Mr., right? Mr. Lopez. Her name is Mrs. Smith. What? Mrs., right? Mrs. Smith because she is married. Her name is Miss Kim. Mm -hmm. Miss Kim, she is single. Her name is Ms. Anderson. Number four, Ms. Anderson. We don't know. We have no idea about it. All right? Okay, let's go to the next part. And let's see what do we have here in this part. Listen up. Page four, exercise seven, saying hello. Part A, listen and practice. One. Hi, Matthew. How's it going? Great, thanks. How about you, Lisa? Fantastic. This is super, super basic and easy conversation, right? You can simply say, hi, Matthew. How is it going? Listen, and instead of saying, how are you? Hello. Hi, how are you? Okay. Change it, please. You know, this is super, super irritating and frustrating. Say, how is it going? So how is it going is another form of saying, how are you? All right. So when you say, how is it going? And then the next person says, great thanks don't say fine say great all right 
Great, thanks. How about you, Lisa? So when you do not want to repeat the same question, you can simply say, how about you? Understand? How about you, Lisa? Means the same question. How is it going for you too, right? Two. Good morning, Mr. Garcia. How are you? I'm just fine, Alex. Thank you. Very nice. So what happens here? Good morning, Mr. Garcia, how are you? Listen, when you're saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, okay, you don't need to say hi. For example, hi, good morning. I mean, that is not necessary. Good morning itself includes the word hi inside it. Understand? So you can say good morning and that's enough. Good morning. Uh, when you're saying good morning, basically, uh, first, you're wishing a nice good morning for your friend. Second, you're saying hi. Understand? So good morning, Mr. Garcia. You know, when you are saying Mr., this conversation is super, super formal. Understand? Formal conversation. How are you? I'm just fine, Alex. Thank you. I'm just fine means like so-so. I'm just fine. I mean, this is the sort of way that people are basically using in their languages. Fantastic. Now let's go to next part. Three. Good afternoon, Linda. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. How are you doing? Very nice. Listen again, good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, right? Again, good afternoon, Linda. How are you? So what is going on here? So this is very friendly conversation because there is no miss or missus or mister kind of things in this conversation. So this is super, super informal or friendly conversation. Good morning, Linda. How are you? Oh, pretty good. This is my favorite. Pretty good. Thanks. Or pretty good. Thanks for asking. What about you? Or how are you doing? Right? So instead of saying, how are you? You can say, how are you doing? How are you doing, right? This is another way of decorative language. Don't forget that. <clears throat> One more thing, guys. If you say good night, okay, good night, you are finishing or ending the conversation. You cannot basically say how are you. For example, good night, Maysam. How are you? Mm, it's sort of awkward or, you know, unreal. So only good night means bye, but good morning good afternoon and good evening all of these expressions or phrases mean hi understand four good evening mrs morgan hello miss chen how are you i'm okay thank you very good and also this conversation if you may notice this conversation is also formal or official why because there is miss is right mrs or miss so good evening mrs morgan means hi mrs morgan uh and she says that hello miss chen again because why because chen is single how are you you see i am okay thank you so you don't need to say i am fine i am fine change it say i am good i am great i am okay right like that fantastic all right so it says here go around the class greet your classmates formally with titles and informally without titles you know go around the class you don't have any class again you can talk to your friends online friends or maybe your best friends your family members who are simply improving or practicing their english right and try to greet them so listen, greet. Greet means to say hi and how are you. It is not great. Great means awesome. Greet means hi and how are you. Don't forget that. Let's go forward. We have a couple of more conversations. Page 5, Exercise 8, Conversation. He's over there. Part A, Listen and Practice. Excuse me, are you Stephen Carson? No, I'm not. He's over there. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Very good. So Jennifer and David are talking. Jennifer says, excuse me, pardon me. I am sorry, right? Are you Stephen Carson? You know, because I am looking for Stephen Carson and I do not know exactly who Steve Carson, Stephen Carson is, right? So I am looking for. So look for means search, right? I am searching uh, Stephen Carson. No, I am not. He is over there. You know, over there, over here are uh, different from there and here, right? You know, if you can show somebody or something, okay, uh, by, by pointing to them, you can say over there, okay? Because I cannot reach them. They are far away over there. But if somebody or something is close to you and you can show them, okay? You can say over here. For example, where is your telephone? My telephone is over here because I can show it to you, right? Like that. And here, uh, he's saying, for example, he is over there, you know, he is showing. But if you cannot show somebody or something, you can simply say there. For example, taxi, where is the taxi? Is there any taxi around here? Yeah, there is. There. You know, I am sure that there's a taxi over there, but I cannot show it to you because I cannot see it. But I'm sure. In that case, I say there, right? Or vice versa, like here. So, for example, where is my book? I'm, I'm sure that it is here, but I, I do not know where exactly this book is, right? But I'm sure that this book is here. Because I cannot show it to you or to myself, I cannot say it is over here. Understand? Let's go to next dialogue. Stephen, this is your book. Oh, thank you. You're in my class, right? Yes, I am. I'm Jennifer Miller. Very good. Again, then Jennifer could find Stephen and Jennifer stands and says, Stephen, you know, with the intonation, Stephen, like a surprise, this is your book, means I found your book find found in the past tense i found i found your book and this is yours oh thank you you are in my class right means if if you are in my class it means that we are classmates or we are sharing the same class or classroom together like that yes of course yes i am i am jennifer miller or my name is jennifer miller she could say fantastic Next conversation. Hey, David. This is Jennifer. She's in our math class. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Super, super nice conversation. Listen, when you are introducing somebody to somebody else, repeat, when you're introducing this one to that one, this person to that person, you need to say this is. They do not say he is or she is, okay? They say this is, oh, this is my brother, this is my sister, this is my classmate, this is my friend, this is my father, this is my manager, understand? So the same story goes on here. Like Stephen says, hey, David, this is Jennifer. She is in our math class. So what is math? Math is short form of mathematics. So, you know, the numbers, of course, everybody loves that. And he says, of course, uh, you know, this is, this is Jennifer. And David says, hi, Jennifer. And Jennifer says, hi, David. Nice to meet you. And of course, the conversation can go on, of course, and continue, of course. So Stephen says, hey, David, uh, this is Jennifer, right? She's in our math class, mathematics class. And David says, uh, hi, Jennifer. Understand? And Jennifer says, Hi, David. Nice to meet you. So what happened here? Simply, Stephen could introduce Jennifer to David. Very, very easy, right? Let's go forward. It says, greet a classmate, then introduce him or her to another classmate. You can also do that. It is possible if you do, if you have sort of Zoom conference right now because of the pandemic, obviously, or you can do it whenever you want. Now let's talk about the grammar focus. You know, I'm Jennifer Miller. You're in my class. She's in our class or Jennifer is in our class. 
he is over there or Stephen is over there it's Miller or my last name is Miller what is going on here basically you need to shorten the sentence right and instead of saying I am Jennifer Miller which is super uh, formal you can say I'm Jennifer Miller and instead of saying you are in my class you can say you're in my class and you have to basically practice repeat 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 so that you can fully understand and learn these grammatical points there is nothing wrong with this you can practice and practice and the question form am is are goes travels to the beginning of the sentence and says are you Steven Carson? Are you Steven Carson? This is a question because am um, is are uh, travels to the beginning of the sentence. In that case, most probably the sentence is a question sentence, right? And these are some short answers like yes, I am. No, I'm not. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine. So pay attention to this part and try to memorize. I'm, I am. You're you are his he is she's she is it's it is understand fantastic so i am you are he is for male for men she is for women or females and it is for objects or animals fantastic go down okay i leave it blank you can pause the video right now and try to answer these questions later we will put the answers in the description area all right and also complete the conversations then practice in groups so you can also fill in the gaps and uh, try to practice we will put the answers in the description area or maybe in some other groups like telegram whatsapp or facebook all right you can simply find them then part c it says class activity again of course we don't have any class but write your name on a piece of paper put the papers in a bag then take a different paper find the other student and try to have this conversation I, that is not really uh, necessary but you can do it if you wish so part 10 pronunciation very important listen up page 5 exercise 9 page 6 exercise 10 pronunciation linked sounds listen and practice notice the linked sounds I'm Antonio. She's over there. You're in my class. So what is the problem here, guys? You need to connect the words here. All right. Link means connect. Okay. You have to mix them, connect them. Like I'm Antonio is wrong. You have to put them together like I'm Antonio. I'm Antonio. So mm, ah. I'm Antonio together or she is over there she is over there we don't say she is over there we say she is over there she is over the oh okay connect or you're in my class you're in you're in you're in my class understand this is a connection or link between these uh words you have to pay attention to them and by practicing you can simply do that just practice now we go to next part personal information listen up page six exercise 11 personal information part a listen and practice zero o one two three four five six seven eight nine ten very good listen guys 
uh, when you are basically giving your personal information or contact information, normally they are asking for your telephone numbers, right? So for numbers, for telephone numbers, actually, you need to tell the numbers one by one, like, oh, one, two, three, four, like that. They don't say, for example, uh, for example, zero, five hundred, fifty three or two thousand twenty one they don't say like that so one by one so one two three like that and also for the figure zero you can also say oh why because the the shape of zero uh, is very similar to the letter o that's why they call it as o you can also say that now let's go forward and and let's have a look at the uh pair work practice these phone numbers and email addresses then listen and check your answers so listen up page six exercise 11 part b pair work practice these phone numbers and email addresses then listen and check your answers allison parker 402-555-2301. Work phone. 646-486-1004. Cell phone. A. Parker 1 at C-U-P dot O-R-G. Email address. Listen up. Allison Parker is the name, obviously, right? So for work phone, you can say 402 or 402, no problem. 555. Five, five. Do not use, for example, double five, triple five, 200 times five. So this is confusing, okay? Just read the name, read the number, like 555201. Oh, That's it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy easy peasy lemon squeezy right or again they don't say double zero double o they say one o o four right so what about the email address for email address you can read the name or you can spell it basically a p a r k e r one then at so that sign is at okay or you can say at sign no problem at sign c u p dot org so why they say dots because that specific symbol has three different names in mathematics they say point for example 2.5 for example in internet terms terminologies or vocabulary you can say dot for example www dot blah 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 dot com or for email of course cup dot org understand or at gmail dot com for example understand and also in punctuation they call it as period you know that specific uh, sign is called period or full stop understand so that is something very important that you need to think about and remember now let's talk about the second part kenji mori 212-924-1764 home phone 643-555-2301 Eight five, cell phone. Kenji Mori O nine at Cambridge dot O R G. Email address. Of course, that is the same mentality, and you need to simply remember the uh, the way that you are telling the numbers or telling the email addresses. Right? This is super super easy. Practice again. First of all, write your own email address, write your own telephone number, or maybe you can write your friend's telephone numbers and email addresses and then try to read them. Read them and practice. That's it. Let's see what is going on. Listen up. Page 7, Exercise 12. Listening. 
A Class List Part A Jennifer and Michael are making a list of classmates' phone numbers and email addresses. Listen and complete the list. What's David Medina's phone number, Michael? It's 212-555-1937. 212-555-1937? Yes, that's it. And his email address? It's David Medina at cup.org. Okay, Sarah Connor. What's her phone number? Hmm, Sarah. Her number is 347 555 7645. 347 555 7645? That's right. Her email is Sarah C at Cambridge.org. That's S A R A H C at Cambridge.org. Now let's see. Stephen Carson. His phone number is two one two six four five. Five nine six zero, right? Yes, that's right. Two one two six four five five nine six zero. His email address is S Carson one three four at CUP dot org. So that's S C A R S O N. 134 at cup.org? Yes. And Nicole Johnson's number and email? Oh, Nicole is my roommate. Our number is 646-555-3806. Her email address is Nicole J at Cambridge.org. I'm sorry, can you spell that? Her email address? Yeah. Sure. It's N I C O L E J at Cambridge.org. Okay, got it. Thanks. Very good. So what happens here, guys, you need to basically listen to this part and try to write them down in your notebook. Or if you have the book, you can basically write them down in your uh, book also. No problem. Part B, it says, class activity, make a list of your classmates' names, phone numbers, and email addresses. Okay, that is it. You don't need to basically find your classmates email addresses you can find anybody's email addresses anybody's telephone numbers and try to read them out loud to practice this information so let's go forward number 13 famous classmate that is not important forget about that now let's talk about number 14 which is saying goodbye right every beginning has an end so every conversation starts and also finishes now let's talk about that number one page seven exercise 14 saying goodbye part a listen and practice one See you later, Matthew. Bye-bye, Lisa. Very good. See you later, Matthew. You know, see you later means see you next time. So when you say see you next time means goodbye, right? And Matthew says bye-bye, Lisa. You know, bye-bye. Or you can say bye, no problem. Or also you can say goodbye, no problem. All of them are actually the same. 
Now, let's go to the next part. Two. Bye, Mr. Garcia. See you tomorrow, Alex. All right, what happens? Bye, Mr. Garcia. Again, very formal, Mr., right? Bye, Mr. Garcia. And Mr. Garcia says, see you tomorrow, Alex. See you tomorrow. See you next week. See you next year. See you next month. See you tonight. See you tomorrow morning, right? You can simply change these sentences as you wish. Now let's go to number three. Three. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Very good. So goodbye. This is super, super cliche. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. What is weekend? End of the week. Why he says have a great weekend? Because he wants to say that I wish you a very nice, awesome, great Saturday and Sunday. Because weekend means Saturday and Sunday. And she says that. Thank you, you too, means I wish you a great weekend for you also. Understand? Now let's talk about number four. Four. Good night, Mrs. Morgan. Goodbye, Miss Chen. Have a good evening. Very good. Again, good night. See, good night means bye. It is never high. So goodbye. Mrs. Morgan means bye-bye, Mrs. Morgan, end of conversation. And Mrs. Morgan says, goodbye, Miss Chen. You know, goodbye, Miss Chen. This is very formal and official because of the Miss or Mrs., because of the titles, actually. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good morning. No problem. And part B says, class activity. Go around the room, say goodbye to your classmates and teachers. You can also try to practice this very point of the lesson with your friends or classmates also online or offline. Thank you guys for watching it. I hope it was useful. Study, practice, and listen carefully, okay? See you in the next video.